Okay, let's start. So, um, today we will be doing more Chovan of homology, uh, and, but now we have a reference, and the reference is the handout of a talk that I gave in Montreal in 2013, and um, uh, you can find it at http.drawbn.net slash mo13. Okay? Uh, homework 2 is on the web, and I'm very proud of it, even though it got ruined a bit, because it's only six characters long. Okay? Uh, homework 1 is due at 11.59 p.m. I mean, really the point of homework 2 is that I want you to be creative. Give a creative answer to that question. Okay? Good. Uh, and uh, so a few preliminaries and then the handout. So first of all, uh, vector spaces have sums and product, right? products, right? So if uh, A and B are vector spaces, then there is a vector space called A direct sum B, and I will not remind you uh, what it is, I will only tell you that the dimension of A direct sum B is the sum of the two dimensions. So, sort of, dimension is a homomorphism from the group of vector spaces to the group of integers, except these are not groups. So, uh, sort of. Similarly, uh, if you have two vector spaces A and B, there is a vector space called A tensor B. Uh, I don't know if I need to remind what that is or not, but let me just say, or let me do it in a rather superficial level. So if A is, uh, has a basis uh, AI and B has a basis uh, bj, and of course ai, uh, i is run from 1 to n, and the j is run from run 1 to m, then a tensor b has a basis, sorry, not equal, but, well, equal to the span of uh, elements that are called ai tensor aj, uh, bj, ai tensor uh, bj, and sometimes when I'm lazy, I'll suppress the tensor symbol in between the AI and the BJ. And here, I runs from 1 to N, and J runs from 1 to M. So overall, the basis is of size N time, times N. So the dimension of A tensor B is the product of the two dimensions. The dimension of A tensor, uh, sorry, times the dimension of B, so sort of uh, uh, we went from um, uh, so, so sort of now it's a ring homomorphism and in fact in some sense it's a ring because again loosely because there is a distribute there is an associative law there is a distributive law so a tensor B plus C is a tensor B plus a tensor C uh, I mean but 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 I'm not going to say much about this. Okay, now, the same extends to complexes. So now, if um, AR is a complex, meaning it also has a differential, and if, so an R is an index, R runs from minus some number to plus some number. Um, and excuse it, me? Yeah. Sorry, um, so number one, I think your camera is pretty blurry. And number two, are you recording? Yes, I am recording. Okay. Oh, you're Sorry. looking. You're looking for a. Uh, you're looking for a recording on um, Zoom. I'm not recording on Zoom. I'm ro recording directly on the camera. Camera. Okay. You, you will not okay. see a recording on Zoom. As for that, it's blurry. I don't see oh. any reason for it. So I don't. I know. Actually, as I was as I was speaking, the, it got better. I'm not okay. sure what happened. So there is the okay. okay the, the camera occasionally auto focuses, and then it sort of searches for focus. 
and if it can't find anything, so it gets blurry for a second. Okay? Mm -hmm. By the way, your camera is blurry. <laughs> oh, is it really? Uh, no, no, it was before, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so again, AR is a complex means that we have a sequence of vector spaces indexed, and D is a map which increases one, which goes one from, from AR to A R plus one for every R. And suppose, likewise, we have a sequence of vector spaces BR and a differential D, and maybe we should call it D sub A and D sub B, just to indicate this is the differential of the A complex and this is the differential of the B complex. Then there is a differential on AR direct sum uh, BR, and the differential is really on the first component you act with DA, on the second component you act with DB, and, uh, and, 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 and that makes the direct sum a complex. And since all the dimensions of all the groups are additive, uh, the Euler characteristic of the direct sum complex, uh, so the Euler characteristic of, uh, of A uh, direct sum B is the sum of the Euler characteristics. Okay? It's a bit more interesting uh, that there is also a, a differential on the tensor product complex. So, uh, uh, so again, given the same A and B, there is a complex A uh, tensor B, uh, and uh, the differential is often loosely written as the differential of A plus the differential of B, but this is loose, and I have to explain, and the properties that we're going to have is that the Euler characteristic of A tensor B is the Euler characteristic of A times the Euler characteristic of uh, the B complex, okay? Uh, but, uh, but this actually requires an explanation. So what is the tensor product? The tensor product is defined by, so if you look at the complex A tensor B and you want to know what is the dimension R piece of it, so the dimension R piece of it is the direct sum of all the ways of reaching R uh, by taking uh, R, dimension R1 from A and uh, dimension uh, R2 from B and tensoring the two spaces. So it's the direct sum as R1 plus over all choices of R1 and R2 which add up to R of this. Okay? And then uh, the differential and again, there is a little lie there. The differential acts by you. So if you want to know what is D of, an, of, of acting on a, a vector space like this, you act by DA on the left factor plus by DB on the right factor. Okay? And that's not quite true. So let's fix it. I mean, this is loosely true, but, but, but not quite true. So let's fix it. So uh, I'd like to think of it this way. So the complex uh, B, I'll draw vertically. And this is the differential of B. The complex of A, sorry, the complex A, 
I will, I will draw horizontally, and this is the differential of A. The complex A tensor B is obtained by uh, making an array of points. Of course, these are not points, but uh, tensor products of vector spaces. And so, uh, like if here was A1, A2, A3, A4, and here was B7, uh, B8, B9, okay? Then I, I, uh, I, I make an array of dots where each dot really represents a ten tensor product. So, for example, uh, the dot here stands for A2 tensor uh, B da. I failed to make it aligned. I'm sorry. I should have uh, been a bit more uh, careful. Let's rewrite it. So the B complex goes like this, uh, and the differential of B goes up, and this is B7, B8, B9, B10, uh, B11. Uh, so now this is an element of B of A2 times B10. This represents A2 times B10. Okay? And it's a part, so it's a part of uh, A tensor B, the dimension 12 piece of it. And then if you want to know what are the other dimension 12 pieces, then they live on... Uh, sorry, I, uh, 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 they live on this diagonal. Okay? And of course the diagonal extends because both complexes extend, but only finitely much because both complexes extend only finitely much. And then the differential is uh, you... Uh, so the differential in the direct sum complex is uh, you go one step up in the A direction that gives you, gets you to the next dia diagonal. So basically on each of the factors you go one step up in the A, -A direction. And uh, one step up in the B direction plus the, the possibility of going one step up in the B direction. But here you need a little bit of a, of a modification. Namely, uh, you need to um, um, put some minus signs. And uh, let me be clear about the minus signs. So, uh, the minus fine signs are placed as follows. So, if you want to uh, compute the differential in the uh, A tensor B complex of an element A tensor B, then this is the differential of A uh, acting on A tensor uh, the element B, that's the first term and there is no sign in it, plus minus 1 to the degree, sorry, not the degree, the dimension of A, minus I times the dimension of A, the dimension of, uh, the dimension of A is the um, uh, uh, dimension of the group to which it belongs, the chain group to which of it belongs, times uh, A tensor, the differential in the B complex of B. 
In other words, you multiply, uh, let's see, uh, this differential by a minus sign because it's a B differential and it comes on top of an odd A space. Uh, you do not multiply this one by a minus sign, so this one remains taken with a plus, uh, but you do multiply this one by a minus sum, sign. Why are we doing all this? Well, we need to check a crucial property is that the differential squared will be zero. So, we need to check that if you use this differential twice, you'll get zero. Okay? So, uh, 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 so suppose we start, like, let's say, here, and I want to apply d squared. So, d will get me to here and to here will give me two, two elements, one here and one here, and then d squared will get me to here and to here. Now, this little diagram drawn here is commutative because um, basically the vertical lines act on the uh, uh, b factor and the, and the horizontal, sorry, yeah, and the horizontal lines act on the A factor. But this means, well, the fact that it's commutative is bad. It means that D squared is not equal to zero. It means that whatever contribution I got from going this way is the same as the contribution that I got this way. But here comes the sign. I've inserted a minus sign here, and so going horizontals and vertical is uh, the opposite of going vertical and then horizontal, and so the two terms cancel. There is actually another contribution in the um, uh, uh, um, uh, tensor product complex, namely, I could go up twice or horizontally twice, but that's obviously zero uh, because 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 the A complex squares to zero and the B complex squares to zero. Are you with me? Um, I did have a question about your use of the word dimension. Yeah, so uh, dimension I, so dim, I, I'm using, oh, you know what? Uh, so degree? Or? Yeah, so um, I don't want to use degree because I'm going to use degree elsewhere. In homology, often, chain groups are labeled by dimension, like in algebraic topology, it's the dimension of the complex. Okay, sorry, the dimension of the chains. Like when you talk about H3, it means that you're talking about three-dimensional chains in your space. So that's why I use dimension, and you know, uh, now that you mention it, this is a very bad choice because I'm also using dimension for something else, and it's going to get confusing, okay? So, you know what? I retract, and instead of dimension, let me uh, use a new word, height. Okay, so the height within the complex. So, okay? Sorry, I take it, I, I, I stand corrected. Okay. I'm, I'm not actually sure what you mean by dimension or height anymore. I thought I did, but... I'm so, dimension is not the dimension of it. Okay. The height of an element is not... The, the height of... The, 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 okay. So, uh, uh, height is the superscript. So, this is the height. So, it's which chain group do you fall in? And this, so, uh, so uh, in A tensor B, the elements of height R are the tensor products of elements of height R1 and R2 in A and B, provided R1 plus R2 is equal to R. Okay? And I apologize. I should have called it height to start with, and I, I, uh, I, 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 I blundered.
Okay. Sorry, I also had a question about earlier. I just want to clarify, that. like, when defining the sum, the direct sum, like, the R dimension, one is, is it the same as, like, the tensor one, but with sum instead of tensor? Like, we... Sorry. Sorry. Uh, here? Here? Uh, uh, yeah, like, we, we so, say, like, A to the R, direct sum B to the R, but I just want to say, like, the whole R dimension thing is, like, yes. the direct sum of the... Okay. Yeah, so, sorry, so it's not R, again, but we, we're using a new language. It's not dimension, it's, it's height. So, in A tends, in A direct sum B, the mm -hmm. height R piece is the direct sum of the height R, R piece of A and the height R piece of B. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, 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 let me uh, write this, okay? So, if you're looking at A direct sum B, and A and B are both complexes, and I want to look at the height r part of this, then this is, by definition, a r direct sum b r. Okay? And, and the action of the differential is you act on both components at the same time. So, you move so the differential moves a plus b up r to a plus b up r plus 1, which is a up r direct sum b up, sorry, a up r plus 1 direct sum b up r plus 1. Okay? Good. Now, um, uh, one more thing to say about, uh, oh, I think I said it. But let me re-say it. Uh, the uh, Euler characteristic of a tensor product of two complexes, so if A and B are complexes, the Euler characteristic is the Euler characteristic of uh, A times the Euler characteristic of B. And if you don't believe me, uh, let's do a very, very, very quick computation, okay? So this is uh, sum minus 1 to the r uh, of uh, the rth element in the complex, in, in here, which is sum over r1 plus r2 is equal to r of a to the R1, tensor B to the R2, and sorry, I forgot to put the word dimension here. Okay? But this is uh, 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 sum minus 1, uh, sorry, what am I doing? This is sum uh, over all r's of minus uh, to the r, uh, and now the dimension of a sum of products is the sum of the products of the dimensions. So, of, so it's the sum as r1 plus r2 is equal to r of um, um, the dimension of a r1 times the dimension of a r2. But you see, since uh, r1 plus r2 is equal to r, I could bring, I could write this r as r1 plus r2, bringing it into the summation. And since, since I sum over all r's, it's just a free summation over r1 and r2. So I could replace uh, this whole thing by uh, a summation over R1 and R2 minus 1 to the R1 
plus R2, which is the same as minus 1 to the R1, plus times minus 1 to the R2. But now, by the distributive law, I mean, these two terms make the Euler characteristic of the A complex, and these two terms make the Euler characteristic of the B complex. Okay? So it's all very, 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 very simple-minded uh, arithmetic. And I think I need another page, uh, so forgive me while I'm adding it. Append. Um, I, had, I had another question about the choice of differential for the, um, the tensor product complex. Yeah. Um, is there a reason, like, this doesn't look symmetric in that we have the minus signs only being applied to the B differentials and not to the A differentials. Yeah, it's not symmetric. Um, is the, you could have chosen an alternative convention in which I mean, there, is, there are alternative conventions, and they're all equivalent. So at the okay. end, they all produce the same homology theory. Is it like the difference between the couple? Sorry? Oh, right. First Jesse, and then um, Chimaya. Is this like the difference between a, a left action or a right action, where they're isomorphic, but not the same? Uh, no, I mean, lots of things are many choices and they're all the same, and, uh, but I... I um, however, it's reminiscent of uh, something that happens very often in homology. So, uh, or in fact, not only in homology. You, 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 uh, I think it starts at uh, uh, 257 in the second semester, uh, where, uh, uh, where you start talking about differential forms. So sort of, the world is divided into two, two types of things. The even things and the odd things. Okay? And... Uh, um, um, the even things commute with each other and with the odd things, and the odd things anti-commute with each other. So when you flip two odd things across each other, you get a minus sign. Up until differential forms in calculus, you never see the odd things. So you think the world is all even. But really the world has two, two types of things in it, even and odd, and, and they differ by you know, odd things, when you flap, flip odd things across each other, you flip signs. Where do you see it here? You see it in the following. So the differential is an odd object. Okay? So the differential, this, is an odd object. And, and in fact, all differentials are odd objects. So this differential is odd, and this differential is odd. So now, if I want to compute D of A tensor B, then I either compute D A tensor B, or I have to swap the differential to, I have to push the differential to the other side of D to bring it here. So I have to move an odd things across A, and I have to pay a price, which is the parity of A. It's plus one if A itself is even, and minus one if A is odd. And that's a completely general, it's, 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 it's a thumb rule that's good to remember because it happens everywhere in mathematics and in fact it will happen again in 10 minutes. Okay? And, um, and, and you know, there are lots of places where you see this. If you think of, um, in algebraic topology, uh, the differential, the boundary of a simplex. So the boundary of a simplex is somehow an alternating sum of the uh, individual pieces of the boundary. And this alternating sum, if you think about it a little bit, is also coming from the same place. So these are the minuses that always occur in homology theory. Okay? So, I mean... The definition is simple. At the end, this is the definition. I just gave you a thumb rule how to re remember it. Okay? And yes, you are right. Had I chosen to write differentials on the right, uh, 
I'd end up putting the signs in a different place, uh, but, uh, but the result would be equivalent. Okay, Chimaya, you had a question. No, I wasn't adding anything more, so I was just commenting that this particular convention was reminiscent of uh, the external cup product, right? I mean, that's kind of how I guess we're going with this, sorry, order of yeah. So these kind of, the same kind of signs appear everywhere, and that's exactly what I said. Mathematics is divided to odd and even, and there are lots of places where when, when you swap two odd things, you get a minus sign. Okay, so, uh, okay. so now we know about tensor product and direct sums of complexes, and there is one more thing that we wanted to, to do, and I think this is, I think James asked this question. So, but maybe I don't remember, maybe I misremember. So last time somebody asked, oh no, maybe it was um, uh, Reng. Okay, so uh, uh, the question was, um, well, the Jones polynomial is a polynomial. Uh, how can the Euler characteristic, which is a number, be uh, a, a polynomial? And the answer is, it isn't. So the answer is, really, each coefficient of the Jones polynomial becomes the Euler characteristic of a complex. Each coefficient independently. But, Instead of thinking of it as a whole spectrum of uh, complexes, so one complex for each coefficient, uh, which, are, which, you, which are obtained independently, it's much easier to think of it as one big complex in which every element is marked by a degree, and its degree um, uh, tells us which complex it belongs to, which of the, or, or in other words, at the end, which coefficient it will contribute to. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to talk about uh, graded vector spaces. So a graded vector space is basically a vector space in which each element also has a label, I belong to degree 7, which will mean I will eventually contribute to the seventh coefficient of the Jones polynomial. Roughly, okay? So, what's a graded vector space? It's a vector space V, which comes with a decomposition so it is written as a direct sum uh, over some variable n of vn. Notice, notice that now I write the indexes below. And vn are the elements of degree n. Okay? So the elements in vn are elements of, or called, elements of degree n. Now, an n can run, uh, and, and my conventions are still that everything is, is finite. So n runs from some number n1 to some number n2, where these are finite numbers, could be negative, degrees could be negative, and each vn in itself, I want it to be finite dimensional. Okay. Now that I talked about graded vector spaces, I have to tell you what is the dimension of a graded vector space. But you see, the dimension of a vector space, be it a direct sum or not, is uh, the sum of the, uh, is its dimension, okay? But I want somehow to separate the different degrees. And in fact, what I want is to, to, to make it the generating function of the dimensions. So I'll call it the Q dimension of the vector space V, and all that it is, is uh, uh, that I consider each dimension separately, so it's the dimension, it's sum over n of the dimension of Vn, 
multiplied by q to the power n. You know, maybe this q to the power n deserves to look better. Uh, so, uh, multiplied by q to the power n. So, if you want to know what, are, what is the dimension of the space, of the part of the space which is of degree 7, you look at the coefficient of q to the 7. Okay? Now, there is, if v1 and v2 are both graded vector spaces, there is a way to take their sum. And the sum is simply the degree n piece of the sum is the, the, is the sum of the degree n pieces of these. So, uh, v1 direct sum v2, if you look at the degree r, sorry, the degree n piece of it, then this is the degree n piece of v1 direct sum the degree n piece of v2. Okay? Um, ne next, uh, there is te the tensor product. So, if v1 and v2 are graded vector spaces, then I can um, uh, write their tensor product. So, uh, the way I will do it is I will look at the, well, the degree r piece of the tensor product will be, so in fact, degree is exactly the same as height, except it's easier because there is no differential. The, the different degrees are independent, there is no maps between them. So basically this is the sum of all ways of writing r as r1 plus r2 of the degree r, r1 piece of v1 tensor product, the degree, one, uh, the degree r2 piece of v2. Okay? And uh, uh, if you look at the q dimension, the q dimension of v1 tensor v2, so exactly the same computation as before, uh, will tell you that this is the q dimension of v1 times the q dimension, or a very, not exactly, but a very similar computation to the computation of before, will tell you that this is the product of the q dimensions. So basically, um, we've, turned, we've turned dimension into a polynomial. And the product of dimensions are, um, are... the product of vector spaces have the product dimension. And the way this is arranged is really by... basically each power of Q is separate. Has a separate vector space to it. Okay, uh, but, and, and then the last thing is uh, we can talk about complexes over graded vector spaces. So, um, uh, if a complex was uh, AR goes by a differential to uh, AR plus 1 and so on, and uh, coming from AR minus 1, and so on, I can just insist that each of these vector spaces will be graded. But I really want to think of it as a separate complex in each degree. So, um, I want D not to mix degree, degrees. So, if you want, if you have an element A here, I want, well, dA to have the same degree. So I want the degree of A to be equal to the degree of dA, always, okay? And a different way to say it, or a more standard way to say it, is to say I want the degree of D to be zero. So, like, if I think of degree as something additive, I want d not to add to the degree of a, which amounts to saying that the degree of d is equal to zero. So, so really, yeah. Do you mean height or degree? Now I mean degree. So, 
a graded complex, okay, said differently, here is what a graded complex is. So you have uh, AR goes to AR plus 1 comes from AR minus 1, and I'll stop writing the three dots, this should be understood. You have it in degree 7. You also have a complex A6R minus 1 goes to A6R goes to A6R plus 1 and so on in degree 6. You also have a complex A5 goes to A5 goes to A5 and so on. And in fact you have it continuing in both ways. And when I take the sum of all of these, I get a single complex of graded vector spaces. Okay? So really a graded complex is just an independent system of complexes, one for each degree, which you sum together. And there are no interactions, there are no maps going, you know, no maps going up and down. These nothing. They're just independent. Okay? It's kind of disappointing in a way. You don't do anything. Anyway, uh, but it's a way of packing uh, information together conveniently. Anyway, um, um, you can check uh, that... Uh, okay, sorry. Now there is the graded Euler characteristic. So, the graded Euler characteristic, chi q, of a graded complex is defined to be sum over r minus 1 to the r times the q dimension of a r sorry this line here horizontal line or uh, diagonal line was meant to be the letter r okay so it's exactly, the, the graded Euler characteristic is exactly the same as the ordinary Euler characteristic, except uh, instead of dimension you use QD. Now, uh, if you look at the uh, proof, so basically we had a proof that the Euler characteristic com com computed in terms of chains is the same as the Euler characteristic computed in terms of uh, homologies. And that proof is just, you apply it degree by degree. So, and, and you get the same theorem. So you get that this is the sum as minus one, of minus 1 to the r, the q dim of uh, hr. And maybe I should have said, that the R homology, if, if you have a graded complex, its homology is also graded. Because basically it's a bunch of independent complexes. Everything happens independently in each degree. Okay. Uh, and the same rules apply. So the Euler characteristic of a ton, tensor product of graded cro product complexes is the Euler characteristic of the first times the Euler characteristic of the second, and I think that's all I want to say about graded complexes. Are you still with me? So, I mean, this is a lot of bookkeeping information, but this is just bookkeeping. I mean, this is just how do I manage a system of complexes, one for each coefficient, how do I manage all of them together? Okay. Uh, okay, so now the Hovanov theorem, uh, I, I don't know if I should uh, scroll back and show it. Uh, now it has a meaning. Okay? So, oh, maybe that was too long ago. Oh, right. So, Hovano found a graded chain complex, now we know what it means, for each knot whose Euler characteristic 
you know, maybe I should have called it whose Q-Euler characteristic is the Jones polynomial, now it totally makes sense, and whose homology is an invariant. Again, that totally makes sense now. Uh, some people disappeared. Uh, is there a, a reason? I don't know. Okay. Um, so where are we? I think we're done. And I want to go back to the Jones polynomial and do a little bit more to it, okay? So, unfortunately, the conventions that are used in, in, in Hovanov homology are slightly different from the conventions that we, use, that we used before, okay? So there is a little change of variables that one does to get the conventions of uh, Hovanov homology. And here is the sum, a summary of the conventions that are used in Hovanov homology. So, a circle to the k, what used to be equal to, so we used to have uh, that a circle is equal to uh, negative a squared, negative a to the negative 2, but Hovanov wants it to be q plus q inverse. So, this is also q plus q inverse, which amounts to saying that uh, q is equal to negative a squared relative to the old notation, which also amounts to saying that a is equal to uh, the square root of negative q, which I suppose means that there are some i's in between. Now, if you compare it, we also have the Jones q. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Q gets several meanings, okay? The Jones Q was A to the negative one-fourth, okay? So it's not the same, but they differ by a very, very minor change. It really isn't worth, you know, it, it's, it's just different conventions. And the second point is the following. So, uh, in... Uh, um, when we talked about the Kaufman bracket, we did it in two steps, okay? We computed uh, the uh, bracket, so we said j of a node k is equal to uh, the bracket of the node k, uh, sorry, not uh, uh, d, uh, not a, but the bracket of the node k, multiply by, what was it, negative a to the negative 3 times the rise of k, something like that. But instead of doing it in two steps, namely first compute the bracket and then compute, compute the rise independently, we could have done it in one step, namely the rise of uh, a positive crossing is uh, equal to, uh, it came out not equal with my uh, dyslectic uh, um, way of writing. So this was plus one and the right of a negative crossing was minus one. So what I could have done instead is have a separate rule, a separate smoothing rule for the positive crossing from, and, and a separate one for the negative crossing. And this is how things are written here. So a positive crossing becomes q times a zero smoothing minus q squared times a, a one smoothing, and 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 the j of a negative crossing is well similar combination but with different coefficients. And again. If you want to know where these formulas came from, they came from taking the Alexander for sorry the the Kaufman formulas. Wherever you had a, you put square root of negative q, and uh, you uh, put the right factor directly in here. So this is 
here you multiply by negative a cubed to the plus one, and here you put you 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 you, you multiply by negative a cubed to the minus one. Okay? Or whatever, whatever it I, 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 Sorry, again, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting your, your time. The point is that you could have computed the Jones polynomial with separate formulas for the overcrossing and the undercrossing, and these would be the formulas, and then the right is built in. The right correction is built in. Uh, and I suppose next time, I'm over time, so next time I'll have to tell you uh, I have to give an example how such a computation is carried out and how Hovano homology is contracted, constructed in this language. Sorry I'm uh, a bit slow. Okay? I don't know, questions, comments? Is it slow, or I'm, I'm not even 100% sure if I'm being too slow or, in, or if I'm overloading you with too much information too quickly? Well, if you don't tell me, I'll assume that everything is perfect. I like the pace. Thank you. Yeah, I think things are pretty good. Okay, good. So, okay, good. So again, we have a new new conventions for the Jones polynomial, but it's only conventions, nothing else. And next time we will see how to turn every number into a vector space. Okay. So uh, see you on Friday. I'm turning off the video.